what exactly is a conic section? A conic section is a curve obtained where a plane and cone intersect. There are four types of conic sections. The circle, ellipse, parabola, and the hyperbola. You can find these conic sections in your everyday life. Here are a few examples. Ellipses are everywhere in our everyday life. Things such as eggs, a surfboard, or even a spoon or water fountain. You can also find circles in your daily life in things such as a watch, watermelon, pizza, coffee, or even your headphones or tires. You can find parabolas in the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, the arc of a water fountain, bananas, or even a rainbow. You can find hyperbolas in your real life too, in the sides of an hourglass, the stitching on the baseballs, or even in a nuclear power plant. If you take any of these real life conic sections and superpose them on the graph, you can even find their equations. Let's look at some examples. How about we start with circles? The standard form for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Here's a visual example of what that means. h and k stand for your center and r for your radius. Now let's use this information on one of our real life circles and find a few of its equations. To find the equation for the first pepperoni, I found the diameter first, which I found by taking the widest part of the circle and measuring it all the way across. I got three centimeters. Then to find the radius, I have that to 1.5. After that, I found the very center spot, and that was negative six centimeters and 1.5 centimeters. I then took the information I had acquired and plugged it into the original standard form equation, and that's how I came up with my equation. And I did the same steps for pepperoni too. Let's move on to parabolas. Here's the standard form for a vertical parabola. X minus H squared equals 4P Y minus K. Now let's use this information on a real life parabola and find its equation. To find my equation for the water fountain, I first found the highest point on my parabola, which is the vertex. I then plugged that information into the standard form equation. And all I was missing was the variable P. So I took a point off the graph and plugged it into the standard form equation so that the only missing variable was P. I then took the value I had found for P and used it to find my focus and directrix, and then plugged the values back into the standard form equation to come up with my final equation. Next, we have ellipses. Here on the slide, I have both the standard form for a horizontal ellipse and a vertical ellipse. Now let's use this information to find the equations of two real life ellipses. To find my equations for my real life ellipses, I first measured out to find the center of my ellipse and then I took that information to find my vertices and covertices. I then used that information to find A, B, and C. A being the distance from the center, B being the distance from the covertices, and C, the distance from the foci. I then all used all of this information, plugged it back into standard form, and that's how I came up with my equation for ellipses. Lastly, we have hyperbolas. As usual, I'm gonna use this information to find the equations of two real life hyperbolas. To find the equations for my hyperbolas, I first found the center, then I took the slant asymptotes on either side to help me measure out my box values and my vertices. Once I had that, I used that information to find A, B, and C, A being the distance um, to the A being the distance from the center to the vertices, B the center to the box values and see the distance to the foci. I then used all this information, plugged it back into the standard form equation, and came out with my equation. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. By the way, all these photos in this presentation were taken from Creative Commons with the understanding they will not be used commercially and only for creative or educational purposes.